Um, you were in Mark chapter 12 just a few minutes ago, mm -hmm. and um, it it kind of goes along a little bit with uh, with my scripture for tonight. Um, you were in 12, I think, 13 or 14, and you were talking. Um, so these Pharisees and Herodians who were trying to trap Jesus, right. they said three things about him. They said, we know how honest you are. You're impartial. You don't play favorites. And you teach the way of God truthfully. Um, and my scripture for tonight is John chapter 3, starting in verse 1. And it's a, it's interesting because it's there's actually a parallel in there as well. It's almost it's almost like scripture supports scripture, you know. So yeah, that's that's the way it's supposed to be. I just figured that out myself. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> it's one it's one of my favorite ones because I think um, the the discussion that that Jesus have, has with Nicodemus. Um, we can't lose sight of the fact that he tells them that you have to be born again. Mm -hmm. um, there's a parallel passage in Ezekiel 36. Mm -hmm. I think it is that I'm all go to after this. So you even had Ezekiel um, prophesying that um, God was going to put his spirit into us. Um, but it's interesting because so right at the beginning here, you have Nicodemus. Um, it almost sounds like flattery. Um, but he almost, he's almost judging the Pharisees with this statement. So um, he says, uh, it, uh, verse 1, there was a man named Nicodemus, a Jewish religious leader who was a Pharisee. After dark one evening, he came to speak with Jesus. Rabbi, he said, we all know that God has sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are evidence that God is with you. So now those three things that, that Ponzi was talking about in Mark chapter 12, you can add to that, that these Pharisees, and, and here's the top teacher in Israel who says that we know that God, we all know that God has sent you to teach us, which we can draw from that, that they had had discussions amongst themselves about it. So they knew he's admitting here that they knew. Um, your miraculous signs are evidence that God is with you. And then in verse three, Jesus doesn't address what he said at all. He just kind of bypasses it as though he was reading his mind and says, um, I tell you the truth. Unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. What do you mean? Exclaimed Nicodemus. How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the spirit. Humans can produce only human life but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. So don't be surprised when I say you must be born again. Verse eight, the wind blows wherever it wants, just as you can hear the sound, but can't tell where it comes from or where it is going. So you can't explain how people are born of the spirit. So, so Jesus tells Nicodemus that you have to be born again. He says you must be born of water and the spirit. And he's not talking about water baptism here. He's talking about being cleansed by the word of God. So let's now turn to Ezekiel 36. We can start in verse 22. And it's almost like um, in this first, uh, in this, the first part of verse 22, it's like a, it's almost like a prophecy of grace. Um, so verse 22, therefore give the people of Israel this message from the sovereign Lord. I am bringing you back, but not because you deserve it. So there's grace, not because you deserve it. I am doing it to protect my holy name on which you brought shame while you were scattered among the nations. I will show you how holy my great name is, the name on which you brought shame among the nations. And when I reveal my holiness through you before their eyes, says the sovereign Lord, then the nations will know that I am the Lord. For I will gather you up from all the nations and bring you home again to your land. Verse 25, then I will sprinkle clean water on you 
and you will be clean. Your filth will be washed away, and you will no longer worship idols. So that sprinkling of clean water could be a, um, when Jesus said you must be born of water and the spirit, that could be a reference to that. I'm going to stick with that until someone tells me something different. Um, and I will give you a new heart, and I will put a new spirit in you. I will take out your stone, stubborn heart and give you a tender, responsive heart. Verse 27, and I will put my spirit in you so you will follow my decrees and be careful to obey my regulations. And isn't it interesting in verse 27, he doesn't say, um, if you follow my regulations and if you're careful to obey my regulations and if you're good enough and if you measure up, then I'll put my spirit in you. He says, I will put my spirit in you so that you will follow my decrees and be careful to obey my regulations. And the second part of that looks like the fruit of the spirit to me. So that's, that's the parallel to, to John chapter three. Amen. Without the spirit, you can't follow his decrees. Without the spirit, you can't be careful to obey his regulations. Right. Right. So it's, it's, it's the Holy Spirit and then sanctification, right? right? The set apart, the fruit that James talks about. When James talks about, um, oh, show, me, show me your faith by your works. And, and what did he say? That um, faith without works is dead, right? So the decrees, um, following his decrees and obeying his regulations is, um, is fruit, fruits of repentance. Yeah.